I'm Marilyn Wolf. This is Computers as Components, Chapter 1, Model Train Controller Example, Requirements and Conceptual Specification. So let's look at the requirements. We want to be able to control eight trains on a single track. That tells us the minimum number of bits we need for an address for each train. We want to have a throttle control that has at least 63 different levels. So that's pretty fine-grained control of the throttle of each train. We want to have an inertia control that has eight levels of response. The inertia control uh, helps us model the um, ability of the train to accelerate and decelerate. A, a, a heavier train is going to take longer to accelerate and decelerate. We want an emergency stop button that will immediately stop all the trains. And we want an error detection scheme on the messages. Okay, so here is our requirements form in the standard format that we use. We're calling this a model train controller. We um, want to have it uh, control eight model trains. Um, we want to have throttle, inertia, emergency stop, train number inputs. The outputs are the, it's the signals we need to control the train. We want to set engine speed with inertia, emergency stop. Let's say we want to update the train speed at least 10 times a second. Manufacturing cost of $50. That's a guess. Uh, we'll plug it into the wall. It's not battery powered. Console should be two hand comfortable. Okay, less than two pounds. So let's look at a conceptual specification. So we're going to rough out a specification before we go into a more detailed specification. Okay, first, this will just give us practice with UML. And secondly, this is a good idea even if you're an experienced designer. It helps you work through some issues before you commit to too much detail. So let's look at the system commands. We have a set speed command. The parameter is a speed, which can be positive or negative. Speed up or you know, okay, go forward or back. Set inertia, which is non-negative. And emergency stop, which does not need a parameter. Okay, so if we look at a sequence diagram, we have the console over here, the train over here. Messages go only from the console to the train. Okay, there's no communication from the train to the console and we can set, send a variety of messages. Okay. So, how would we model this in UML? Well, we would have a generic command. All of the commands have to have a basic form, and then we can have separate classes for um, the various types of messages that we need. Set speed, set inertia, e-stop. Okay. So, what does the message class do? Well, it gives the basic slots that you need for any type of message, such as the address. Okay. Uh, in some cases, the uh, message, the, the derived message classes will fill in parameters. For instance, the message class can give a uh, attribute for the code for a particular type of message, but not fill it in. Then the set speed, set inertia, and e stop each fill in different values for that message code. Okay. This collaboration diagram just shows the relationship between the console and the receiver. So um, we have a relationship between a console and a receiver, and we can send a bunch of commands. So, in summary, the requirements to find basic capacity of the system, among other things. And our conceptual specification helps us rough out the behavior before we uh, get into too much detail. 